This is the Book Legion Podcast, where we review thought-provoking books to give our legionnaires the knowledge they need to dominate the next level of their life. Thanks, everybody, for joining me on this week's episode of the Book Legion. My name is Tyzer Evans, and this week we're going to be covering Don Miguel Ruiz's book, The Four Agreements. So those of you who aren't familiar with Don Miguel Ruiz, he's a Mexican native, comes from the rural part of Mexico. His mother was a healer and his grandfather was a shaman, and this is very important based on the principles of the book. He had a near-death experience in the 1970s that led him to start to question reality, what life is about, the meaning of life. And so he went back and started looking at his roots, what his people had discovered. And he discovered there is this ancient way of wisdom, this ancient way of being that he wanted to bring forth into the 21st century. So he wrote this book, The Four Agreements, back in 1997, I believe. And since then, it's gone on to impact millions upon millions of people's lives. I first read this book uh, while living in Santa Barbara and going through one of my own, probably my biggest life transition uh, about 10 years ago now. So that would have been about 2011 was the first time I read The Four Agreements. And it, when people ask me, you know, what's the book that you, you gift the most or what is the book you've given out the most or if I could read any book, what would it be? This is always the book I come back to, The Four Agreements. Um, I've probably given this to well over 20 people. Um, And the cool thing is it's only 133 pages long. It's one of the most impactful books that's set on four basic uh, principles, the four agreements, that you have to make with yourself. So the whole book is about how to apply ancient wisdom that's been around for thousands of years. So Don Miguel Ruiz brings back this ancient Tolic wisdom that his people used, that the uh, shamans used, in order to have better self-discovery and look for the meaning of life, or at least to be able to have a way of life that has more meaning, promotes more meaning by going inward as opposed to focusing on everything that is external. And so it's very uh, good because us in Western civilization, you know, for the most part, a lot of us are about instant gratification. We're on to only really focusing on what the five senses can experience. You know, five senses, what we can see, touch, smell, hear, and taste, right? And so this has you start to have a paradigm shift in the way that you view the relationship with yourself and the way you start to review the relationship with others. So there's only obviously a couple of chapters because there's only four agreements. So I'm going to cover uh, some of my biggest takeaways. I'm not going to do my standard uh, top three things, but just some things I want to talk to you guys about that were really impactful for me and really helped me after reading the book. So the second chapter or the second principle, well, let's just cover the, let's, let's cover the four principles. The first one is be impeccable with your word. Don't take things personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Those are the four agreements, seem very simple. But the one that really resonated to me was don't take things personal. I, for a long time, had this victimhood type mentality where I took everything personal. Everything was a personal attack on me. And I still actually have a hard time with this, but this was the first time in my life, and and why it was so impactful was I had just got out of a really bad relationship when I read this book. I wouldn't say a bad relationship, but it was a, it was a not a great breakup. Um, I didn't handle it very well. And so one of the things that I had to start looking at was like I keep meeting what I felt like were good quality people, and it seemed like everything went well for the first couple months. I'm sure many of you are listening to this right now and going, I know exactly what you're talking about, and then things would often go sideways. And I had to look at like, what was the one common denominator? And it was me. I was a common denominator. I was the reason why the relationships weren't working out. You know, of course the other party plays their part in it as well. But I just was taking things so personal in all of my professional and personal relationships that then I had this victim mentality where everything was the other person's fault and it never allowed me to take a self accountability for any of my actions. And so the book got me to kind of start to re- reframe that I have a choice when someone says something to me, whether I agree or disagree, but especially when you disagree, I have the choice whether to accept that energy or not. 
And by me choosing to accept the energy that I'm choosing to take it personal, but there is absolutely a fundamental choice of whether or not I want to receive and own and take on what the other person is sending my direction. And so once I realize it, like you got a choice in this dude, like you have a choice whether or not to take things personal. You've got a choice whether or not to let it hurt your feelings. You have a choice whether or not you want to be vengeful and retaliate, right? You have a choice in all of this. And once I realized that I don't want to accept that type of energy because I want to be different, I want to act different, and most importantly, I want to feel different about the relationship I'm having with myself because at the end of the day, the relationship with myself is what is most important, then I just chose to not to, like not accept things that don't serve me in my higher calling and my, my the making me the best version of me. And so I just started to filter out a lot of information, which caused me to have a paradigm shift in a lot of the relationships with friends and family members, which relationships I wanted to accept in my life and which ones I didn't. People that were winning or were rooting for me winning or people that were constantly jealous and envious and trying to bring me down and not uplifting me. And so sometimes it's very hard for people because sometimes our closest friends and our family members, they don't want us to grow or to move because when we do that, it triggers their own insecurities. So then they start to subliminally attack us. Relax. You know, you don't have to do everything. Money is the root of all evil. Money won't make you happy. You know, uh, whatever. You hear all these little phrases, little sayings. And that's people projecting their own securities and reality onto you, or you just have people that are blatantly mean. You can't accomplish that. You can't do that. You're no good. You're worthless, right? Those are all insults that people get to throw at you to try to cut you down, which is really just a projection of themselves. And this is what it really talks about is when somebody is really hurting internally, they want at all costs is to get that negative energy out of them and onto somebody else and let somebody else experience the pain that they're feeling. So once I wrapped my head around this concept of not taking things personally, it started to really serve me well because I now was in the power seat of what I chose to take on and what I chose not to take on. The second really big takeaway for me in this is always be impeccable with your word. And my grandfather, who actually consequently had passed away that same year uh, in, well, in 2012, he passed away about eight months after I read this book. One of the principles that he always raised me with, and he didn't raise me, but um, he was definitely in my life a lot and uh, someone that I think about often, almost every day, and uh, you know, 10 years later, it was, was just a really positive male role model in my life. But was, he, he said, you know, if you have something to say, you just say it to somebody's face, right? You never talk behind someone's back. And this kind of goes along with being impeccable with your word. We get so caught up into gossip. If fundamentally by, it's like a, it's a nature thing, or maybe it could be a Western thing, where we love talking about gossip. I mean, we have whole like magazines dedicated to it. We have whole TV shows dedicated to it, right? Like it's a part of our culture to talk shit and talk behind people's back and to just like wallow and surround ourselves in chaos and drama. And I think by being impeccable with your word, it starts to help again get this paradigm shift to acknowledge the thoughts that are coming out of your mouth. Because, you know, one, I start to think a lot about your intention and the energy that you give out, right? So if my intention is pure, and I'm saying good things about people, I'm in service of others, then that's the type of energy I'm going to receive back. But if I'm constantly just talking about other people in a negative way, I'm, you know, talking about how envious of how good their life is, I perceive it to be, or I'm talking about how they did, a coworker did this at work, or how, you know, my mom said this to her friend, or, you know, my wife said this to me, or, you know, all these different situations, right, where we like to gossip about all the different people in our life. And one of the things that just stood true to me is that I was getting too caught up in that drama. I was getting too caught up in old stories. And when you're caught up in old stories and things that happened, right? So like the thing already happened. So you have a choice to have let the thing happen once, learn from it and move on. Or you can go back and you can play that story a thousand more times and think in your mind about all the things you could have said and all the things you could have done. And then try to plot a revenge scheme or the next time you see that person, you're going to make yourself heard, you know, or you're going to go tell, you know, 100 different people this story, right? And all you're doing 
is you're like, you're stuck in the past. So it doesn't allow you to grow and to move forward. So being conscious and impeccable of your word allows you to be like, you know what? I'm not going to go talk shit because it doesn't serve me in my highest calling and my greater good. So for me, it really helped me get out of this, like being surrounded in chaos and drama and shit talking. It got me out of that. It had me think about the words that are coming in my mouth. Are they of the right intention? Does it serve me and does it serve the other person? Even if, despite if I think the other person deserves me saying something about them to other people or not or exposing them or whatever it is, is, is really irrelevant. It's what type of energy do I want to manifest myself in internally and what type of energy do I want to exude out to the world? And the more that I can be impeccable with my word, not shit talk, accept people for who they are, have no judgments, understand that we are all flawed. I'm flawed. And the more that I can accept that and give people leniency, uh, give them a little bit of space, uh, give them, you know, to, to just be them, to make mistakes and not take it personally, right? Which is another one of the agreements, not to make assumptions about why they they did what they did. Maybe they were having a bad day. Maybe they were going through a divorce. You know, maybe their child's sick. You never know. Maybe they've got a parent that just passed away. You don't know what someone's going through, right? So don't make assumptions. But all I can do is control to be impeccable with my word. And I know that if I'm being impeccable with my word and I'm not surrounding myself and talking shit and being in the drama and being in the chaos, then it starts to serve me. And it's just that law of reciprocity kept in. The more I'm impeccable with my word, the more I'm in service of others, the more I'm positive, the more that I'm going to get back into my life tenfold. So it was one of those things for me to really be conscientious of what is coming out of my mouth, who was coming out of my mouth too. And then, and then secondly, like what are the internal thoughts? Am I being impeccable with my word to myself? which is the most important? Am I keeping promises to myself? Am I having negative self-talk? Am I doubting myself? Am I putting myself down? And start to re-reverse that. Where are those insecurities coming from? So it started, it kind of like that coupled with meditation helps you get that observer effect of looking at, why do I feel this way? Where is this coming from? I need to process this. Why did that make me feel insecure? Why did that trigger emotion? And start to have me kind of analyze those thoughts and realize, okay, I'm not going to project back. I'm still going to be impeccable with my word. I'm not going to make assumptions why this person came at me that way. And frankly, it's none of my fucking business. And the more that I dug into that and the things that come out of my mouth are positive, they're well-meaning, uh, with the right intention, the more I got back to that in my life. And my life just started scaling up income-wise, relationship-wise, spiritually, physically, everything. You know, obviously, I'm not, I'm 37. I'm not the fittest guy in the world, but you know, I'm, I'm six foot, uh, 195 pounds. I'm in the gym six days a week, right? So it's just like, it had me be conscientious of a lot of different things. I, I tell you, after that, um, I met my wife seven months after I read this book. I think it was because I was a lot more conscientious and cognizant of putting out good energy. And then that was reciprocated to me. I started owning my faults. I started to have better talk track in my mind with talking to myself. So I could go on all day long and talking about the 133 pages in this book. Uh, I think you guys get the point. To me, it was very impactful. Honestly, it was life-changing. The book was absolutely life-changing. That's why I wanted to cover it. Um, you know, it's not God-centric. So you can be a Christian. You can be a Muslim. You can be a Buddhist. You can be atheist. And you can read this book and take away principles from it because it's applicable to everybody. Obviously, the, the teachings have been around for thousands of years for a reason. So again, I highly recommend this book. If you're someone who wants to make a paradigm shift with your relationship with yourself and your relationship with others, this is definitely a book for you. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I'll post a link to the book in the show notes so you guys can scroll right down, hit the link and go buy it. I think it's under $10 on Amazon. I want to say it's between, sometimes you can see it as low as five, but it's usually between like five and 11 bucks. Um, and Don Miguel Ruiz has got a whole series. He's got the Fifth Agreement. Um is the one that comes off top of my mind, but he's got probably about eight different books, um, four of which that I have read, I believe. Uh, obviously, this one is the first and the most impactful for me, so uh, check it out. Um, if you guys like the book review, uh, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe to the channel uh, or subscribe to the podcast. I would really appreciate it. And tag me at social media at the book club or all of my other accounts are at Tizer Evans. Check it out. Thanks so much, and I appreciate you guys listening and watching.